Well, welcome again to the School of the Prophets, and we're on our fourth session. And um, I have to say, I've been chatting to Maggie now uh, over these couple of weeks, and it's been some of the best moments I think I've had in ministry in terms of just feeling the presence of God and getting to the nitty gritty of doing um, the prophetic on, on just a supernatural, natural level. And we've been talking about how his sheep hear his voice. We've been talking about all of us prophesying, uh, having that gift to encourage people. And um, last week we looked at eagerly desiring spiritual gifts that if we don't desire them, that God's not going to give them to us. And uh, today we want to move a little bit further on um, because I think some people do get confused between the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, uh, tongues and interpretation. And maybe I'll touch a little bit on that a bit later on as well and prophecy. But I think it might might be an idea just to talk about how prophecy really for me is kind of the, the sort of the bed rock of the gifts of the spirit and the other stuff begins to, build on that and um so i don't know about in your ministry uh maggie but i know in mine as i i learned to encourage people in the prophetic just words of encouragement then god would start to put other things in there so have you got one or two examples and stories about how god's used you in, in that kind of way yeah hi steve um i think especially for you know for years and years being involved with quite broken people uh who needed perhaps uh, a lot of healing, a lot of um, help to get free. And, and, you know, and I believe, you know, Jesus says really clearly in, in uh, Luke chapter four, doesn't he, that his ministry, part of his ministry is to heal the brokenhearted, set the captives free, bring release to the prisoners. And so uh, for me, the, 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 what we call the gifts of the spirit and the sort of gifts we're talking about are often like tools to help with that, aren't they? They're to, they're to help as we chat to other people or as we're praying with people uh, and for ourselves. Often they are keys or they're tools to help with that kind of healing. And I found that um, one of the things that, that's just come up so often is, is what I'd call the word of knowledge gift which is, is part of speaking out again what God gives you, but just speaking out perhaps something that we wouldn't know by any other means, but revelation that God gives. Yeah. Um, so just, just one uh, example I think of, um, that I took a guy one evening to pray for some addicts who were just coming to know Jesus. They'd just come off the streets, you know, where they're in a room, welcoming them in, and they, they want to know Jesus because they've tried everything else. And so I said to this young man who was with me, about 19 years old, I said, we're not just going to pray over these guys our own words. I want you to ask God for something for him to encourage and bless him. So we did that. And he said, oh, dear, I've, I've got something, but I can't give it. I can't share it. And uh, he thought it was too sensitive. Now, I have to say, Steve, this, this young man was not that used to using gifts like this, but he had such a compassionate heart and such a humble spirit. And for me, those are, those are real, such important things. However mm. much you've used the gifts, that's so important. And Father God entrusted something to him for that young man. And the picture he saw was of this, this man that we were praying for and a woman standing either side of him. <laughs> Which, of course, you know, sounds it's a little bit worrying to offer something, somebody like something like that. And I said, we can say it and we can offer it and see if it means anything. And of course it did. You know, the man had a wife and a girlfriend. He was in a muddle, didn't know how to sort it out. Mm. But in the picture, he saw Jesus looking at him tenderly. And I said, what do you think Jesus is saying? He said, I think Jesus is saying um that he knows about it and he can help me if i want him to this man had known jesus five minutes the man receiving the word mm. and it broke him open steve and he dealt with the problem we helped him came to live with us and went on with god now for that young man who gave that word humbly mm. and from a, a very compassionate heart that was do you see what, that was a wonderful mm. key into that man's life and God bless both of them. And, and that was very powerful. But the key for me in that was that young man gave it with, from a compassionate heart and a very humble spirit. Yeah, definitely. I, that kind of puts me in mind of Jesus at uh, the well with a lady. Um, yes. And he meets her and um, 
she has a story to tell that really she doesn't want to tell anybody and, and Jesus just mm -hmm. kind of reads a mail for want of a better word uh, people have often yeah. said that about me when I've kind of gave her a word and brought some detail that you know God read my mail and, and he yes. can read your mail because he, he knows us inside out and back to front and even the secrets yeah. of our hearts that he can yeah. reveal so yeah yeah that's, that's just a wonderful really again a picture of Jesus with, in, with compassion to this lady Yes. Um, yeah. And then she comes with this huge statement, and she see the man that told me everything that I ever did, and yes. Uh, yes. And, they, and everybody comes out because of a simple word of revelation that reveals again the heart of the Father towards people. Yes. I think it, I think it's very important when we're talking about this, and again, you, perhaps you can put a little bit of flesh on the bones for me, is that when we're talking about using the word of knowledge, again, it's never in that kind of way of condemning people. Yeah. Um, I've seen that people use it in that way and kind of operate in a, in a bit of a condemnational type of uh, way towards people. And that can never be right. You know, Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but the world through might be saved. And, you know, as, as he, the woman's caught in adultery in the very act, he's become passionate towards her. We seem compassionate towards Zacchaeus. And well, you've only got to read the scriptures. He, he's, he's compassionate in his, in, in his entirety. So I think that's something we need to bear in mind, don't we, when we're operating in that gift, that we're not here to rip people to shreds. Actually, the opposite is true. We're, we're there to pour it in the oil and the wine, and that word is to release people and set them free. Absolutely. Um, and I think the other thing, particularly about this gift, Steve, the word of knowledge, I think we have to be really careful because from the beginning in Scripture, you know, even in the Garden of Eden, the way that Adam and Eve tripped up was the enemy offered them knowledge. And knowledge can make us feel like we have a bit of power, we have a bit of control, we have something that somebody else hasn't got, or we're in charge of a situation. And in the garden, the Father offered relationship first. Mm -hmm. And so wh whatever I bring to somebody, I'm coming out of that Father's heart. I am coming, I've got to come out of that love and compassion. If at all I'm tempted, to think, you know, I've got this bit of information, I've got this bit of knowledge, and that we get into flesh and, and use it in a condemning or a superior way, or, or the enemy gets any chance to make us feel, you know, that this is from us and we take any glory, mm. then that's, I think, with particularly with this tool, with this gift, um, we have to be very, very wary of that because it's ever so easy for, even as for, for it to take a little bit um so yes I, I i believe that's so important yeah i think as well when we, we've got our ears open to listen to what the father's saying mm -hmm. to us um we mustn't overthink things again i don't know about you but the times when i've actually released something that's been more profound in somebody's life it's been the time when i've just almost spurted it out which again is yeah what prophecy is a spurting forth of, of the heart of God, really. And the yes. times of the times I've just gone, whoa, and then almost kick, kick myself for saying it. And then the person's yes. in tears and responding to God. So I think sometimes in the word of knowledge, you don't think it through. It's not your knowledge. It's not what yes. you've tried to work That's out. True. And that happens so often when we pray for people, we think, well, what this person needs is, Actually, we don't know that, but the Holy Spirit knows all truth, exactly what they need. So I think it's important that we sometimes just clear our mind and let the Holy Spirit use us as a channel. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I think, as you say, you know, sometimes we can try and um, put our spin on it. We start to say something and if, if we if we start... Uh, if we stop the flow of the Holy Spirit and try and put our interpretation on it, I think that's when we can kind of get in a muddle um, because, you know, God knows what he's saying. And and I think that's right, that often, unless it's in the context of healing, I think often in the context of healing, it's a bit different. Perhaps I'll say something about that in a minute because we've had to work with that a lot with our guys. But I think if it's if it's a word... Um, about sometimes about circumstances or sometimes a word about what God's actually got for that person for their next step. Often it's a blurting out thing. I've not thought about it at all. And um, and you marvel then because, because that's God joining up the dots, isn't it? He's mm. just using you to join up the dots um, of what he wants to do. And I think in that kind of setting, it, it's again, it's so important for us not to be in, in the way we deliver anything 
not to be manipulative. Mm. I remember one morning I, I was in a meeting and I felt that God was giving me different words about people and how they would be used in preaching the gospel. And I, I felt that there was one African man there that God was saying to, I want you to go back to your own country, actually, with the gospel. I couldn't see an African man. And then suddenly I did. And he was about the only African man in the thing, mm -hmm. in the meeting. And so I didn't want to say it. And I kept quiet. And he actually came to me afterwards and said, God said to me through what you said this morning that I'm to go back to my own country. And I hadn't given him that specific word. Mm. I was able to confirm it. But I think we have to be so careful um, that we're not manipulating when we, mm. when we give words as well. Yeah, definitely. They draws us all back. And we said this, didn't we, before we went on to record about the whole thing of 1 Corinthians 13 again. Um, mm. The gifts of the Spirit are not there to make us look good. You know, we can have all, the, you know, fathom all the mysteries, and if we don't have love, it's, it's just a waste of time. It's like a clanging symbol. And I think sometimes, with especially with charismatic Christians, we get running away with the idea that these gifts are almost merit badges for, for good service. Yeah. But as you say, they are really just the tools for unlocking mm. people's hearts towards God. You know, and yes. if we will keep on loving people and we'll keep on loving God then I don't think we'll go far wrong. And one of the things I did say to you earlier as well, uh, and I'll, I'll go on record as saying this, I'm quite happy to say, is that if you are bringing somebody a word of in, a prophecy and actually it didn't come from God and it was just some encouraging words from your own spirit, that's the worst you can do. I mean, look that's how many true. times people have torn us down or ripped us to shreds or talked about us. You know, Just yes. to encourage somebody out of the heart of encouragement is a great thing indeed. Yes, and then when God puts his touch on it and his spirit on it, that's even better. So please don't be worried about giving people a word of encouragement uh, as if it might not be from God. Well, even if it's not from God, it's just from you. It's still going to be a blessing. So That's right. Yes. Yeah, because that's, that's always going to be his fault. Yeah. Mm. But I think for me... Um, Steve, I think now, you know, the, the church has a ministry, which I think many, many of us will be involved in either in the, in the, you know, within a meeting context or when we're just chatting with people of, of bringing, um, well, I would call it healing in the widest sense to people who are broken. I think we're going to have more and more people mm. who are very broken in different ways coming into our church families. Mm. And, you know, they might have been to counsellors, they might not, but often it's very hard for people to know what's at the root of what's going on with them. Yeah. You know, I, I was talking to a chap yesterday who's, who's very broken, he's drinking a lot and very messed up background. And he said, I don't know why I'm like this. And I felt, you know, this is a tool, again, that we often need, I think, because um, God in his kindness brings revelation often as we're praying with somebody, you know, about what is at the root of something that so that we don't, we don't have to take years and years, months and months to be counseling somebody, but the Holy Spirit is able to reveal things as we're praying with people and whatever. Mm. And, and I've just seen so much of that and been so grateful for that, for the way that, that the father is able to shortcut things and bring people freedom mm. like that, you know? Um, and, and I, and I think that's, that's very wonderful. And I think it's something for us to work on developing in the church, Steve, in the mm. context of ministering to people and healing, seeing people mm. healed, not mm. just from physical things, but, you know, mm. from emotional and mm. spiritual, um, brokenness. You mentioned something there about physical healing, which I want to touch on. I think if we, for this session, we, I'm gonna, I was going to touch on tongues and interpretation, but I think we'll leave that to the next session. I think yes. we don't want to cloud the water. We're talking about no. knowledge at the moment now. Yes. Um, in recent years, I would say the past five years, God has used me more in calling out words of knowledge in terms of healing. It wasn't yes. something that I really kind of pushed into for a long time because I was a little bit cynical, I have to say. Um, you know, you get to a big meeting and somebody would stand there and go, there's somebody here with a headache. Well, it didn't take a yes. genius <laughs> ge genius to work that out, did it? You know, somebody's got somebody's got a bit of arthritis. Well, who hasn't got yeah. a bit of arthritis, you know? So yeah. I, I yeah. kind of shied away from that thinking, well, yes. but th there is a, a time and I, I felt it when the anointing of God comes upon us and we just specifically call out an ailment or a symptom. Yes. 
and in that moment, God is present to heal. So I think that's important yeah. again when we're ministering to people in a congregational sense or yes. as an individual sense to be listening to the voice of God because it's always about not only saving people and delivering people, but about healing people, isn't it? That's what yeah. you said. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me yes. too. Yes. So uh, has, has that yeah. been some of your experience as well in terms of healing? Oh, yes. And I know exactly what you mean about the, the headache and the backache and things like that. But if is is also then you know that he can that as we're listening um you know he can bring that word of knowledge in a number of ways can't he? It, it might be just a word like you know the word psoriasis or something like that or or it might be you know a painful big toe and um, i find sometimes that, that i actually get the pain you know and i think why have i got such a pain in my toe and and that's it you know and and I know often I've missed it and I've, you know, I've thought, oh, well, I'm, that's probably just me. Somebody else speaks that out. Um, I, some, I, I believe sometimes, you know, I actually would receive a word like that in, a, in seeing the word over somebody, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And it may not be, um, see, I think, because I think the physical and the emotional and the spiritual are all very tied up together. Sometimes you, you can't tell exactly what that is. And I think just speaking of, you know, sometimes I've had a word like um, somebody perhaps cowering or trapped uh, or feeling stifled or whatever. Mm. I don't know if that's a phys just a physical thing or an emotional thing. But sometimes as you speak that and a person is able to completely identify, they know that it's them. I think that's... Mm. A wonderful thing that God is doing there just putting his finger specifically mm. you know on on that um what that person needs mm. and uh, unlocking something so I think yes physical healing I mean again you know if you've got five or six people in the room you probably don't need to be calling out words of knowledge about about healing but I think it is um mm. it, it is a, a lovely tool in that often in that setting yeah again it's just a word of um, word for somebody that gives them a touch point of faith isn't it you know so yes. somebody's i called out a word of knowledge uh, yesterday as i recorded my message uh, for the campaign we're doing this week mm -hmm. uh talking about somebody that had been in a car accident and, and, and damaged their vertebrae i didn't know any of that but that's a touch point for that person if it, that's them uh, and I, I believe that person doesn't know Jesus as they reach out. Um, th it's almost like they, they, you're giving them something to reach out for, to touch the hem of Jesus' garment, not yeah. to touch us, because we can't that's heal right. anybody, anybody. But no, you know, right. in, in calling that out and, and revealing mm -hmm. that, suddenly they realise God, God knows and God is one to, to intervene. So, Yes. Yeah, God God knows me and he sees me. Um, and and I, and that's that's very powerful, isn't it? Because that is God's word into their lives and it just drew out faith and mm. and it's a huge for many people a huge important next step in walking towards him yeah and I, I think as long as we keep on loving people and doing it with that kind of heart then you know these things are, are perfectly natural for all of us to move into um yeah I think we've been, we've been frightened because we've seen the excesses as well have we said you know the evangelist standing there saying you know somebody here with a headache well well, well done, Cluedo. You know, that's, you yes. know, genius, yes. you know, yes. tell us something we don't, don't know, you know. That's right. Um, but, but, it, but again, let's not ridicule it because there are times when, you know, that might be called out and somebody might go, well, actually, I've had this headache for three months and it's, yes. it's crippling me and, and they find it a, a footstep towards God. So, you know, we have to be careful. You know? We do. We do. Um, I mean, a, a, a dear friend of mine who is a doctor, and uh, had had three miscarriages you know she's in a meeting and a woman that she had never met mm. uh, spoke out this word which nobody would have known if they weren't a doctor or giving that word it was a very technical condition you know and it was this lady and she went for prayer and she's you know she's had two children Brilliant. Um, but i think also steve it's like you know i know when i've been praying for our guys in hong kong you know and they will come and some of them would come with a headache mm. um really because sometimes they're just wanting me to give them i can't give them heroin anymore <laughs> but they want me to give them cocoa or something you know but they've got genuine headaches mm. and so sometimes you know after you ask the practical questions 
of course, I would be asking the Holy Spirit wisdom revelation is here that you want to tell me about. Steve, I've been amazed at the knowledge that God has revealed mm. that that person knew but had forgotten. So, for example, you know, I remember praying for a guy one day, kept having headaches. And I saw a picture, if, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen those headdresses, you know, when Chinese people do lion dancing mm -hmm. at Chinese New Year. And I saw the picture of the lion's head on, the, on this man's head. And I said, have you ever done lion dancing? Yes. And I said, have you ever repented about that? Because it's worshipping idols, of course. And he repented about that. God set him free. Never had a headache like that again. Um, so, you know, that, that's, that's, again, it's the goodness of God, isn't it? It's mm. a key. It's, it's just unlocking something mm. so that a person can get set free or get healed. Mm. And again, that's just does a huge thing in that person's life. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a good place, really, just to, to sum up uh, today. That word key, um, I think that's been a repeated thing that we both said um, just over these last few minutes is that the word of knowledge is a key to unlock people into a greater sense of God's presence and allow God to move in their hearts and lives. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think we'd, I'll ask you to pray in a, in a minute, Maggie, but I, you know, I'm going to ask God today to give me some keys. Yes. Um, some, some people go out and bet on the streets, do healing on the streets and all kinds of stuff where they go out and, and take steps of faith. And often, often they do what they call is a bit of a treasure hunt. They just say to God, what yeah. give me some treasure to find and see what uh, what we can do uh, so let's let's pray this morning that as people have been listening to us that god would um, give us give them keys to unlock people's lives and that we'd find some treasure that we never expected to find just because again we're listening to the voice of god so uh, be encouraged everybody uh, keep on pushing in um, it almost sounds sacrilegious to say practice this stuff but you need to mm -hmm. This is practical Christianity 101, hearing God's voice and then hearing it for other people. So, you, you, you know, you don't grow stronger in this until you actually physically get out and, and practice doing it. So I'm sure you'd say, Maggie, your, your strength in doing this now is because of all the months and years you've poured into ministering to people on a one-to-one -one basis, especially some of those lads that have been broken up in Hong Kong and China. Yeah? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So pray for us if you would. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. So, Father, we just we thank you again for the privilege of being able to hear your voice, not just for ourselves, but for one another, Father. And, Father, thank you for the privilege of being used by you and by your spirit, that your spirit through us and through being willing to speak humbly and graciously, Father, and out of your love, that you can unlock things in people's lives. And, Father, we do want to be used. We want to come with your compassion and your humility, not for our glory, but we do want people to see their lives unlocked and for them to come to know you. So Father, I pray for everybody listening today, including Steve and myself, that you would give us those keys. You would give us, you keep us in a place of humility and compassion. And I pray that this week you'd give us opportunities to use the keys that you give us and see people's lives unlocked for you, for your glory, and for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again, Maggie, for being with me. Uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, we'll have a look at uh, next week. We'll have a look. We'll kick off with tongues interpretation because people confuse that with prophecy and we need to make a differential. And perhaps also, if we can get round to it, we'll talk, start to touch on the word of wisdom as well because um, God's able to put some wisdom upon our knowledge, which is even better. So keep on tuning in. Uh, I know many of you are. Uh, keep on practicing and let's see what God will do for us. So thank you once again, Maggie, and God bless you. And I'll speak to you later.